Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is again addressing the Bani Israel. And after addressing them, Allah is ordering them to do what? This is an ordering word. The root word being Zal Kaf Ra. It is an order for the plural masculine. And Zakara means to remember, to mention, or to accept the advice. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the Bani Israel to do what? To remember the bounties of Allah, which Allah has blessed them with. As I mentioned in the previous chapter, that they were a blessed nation. They were given and they were sent with a chain of prophets, with a series of divine scriptures, then they were shaded with clouds and the blessings of springs and the blessings of the food and drinks and even much more. So the message is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his blessings on his people, he wants what? He wants, he expects, and in fact, he orders that his blessings be remembered and that they should not be forgotten or ignored. So here Allah is ordering the blessed people to remember Allah's blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the people to be mindful and grateful of the blessings of Allah. Means what? Allah is ordering gratitude and shukr. So we can very conveniently gather that shukr or gratitude of Allah is then what? It is a do of Quran and it is an order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says in another verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, So gratitude is what? Gratitude, the acknowledging of Allah's blessings is obligatory. It is obligatory for all and it is no doubt, it is a spiritual and it is a physical state of worship also. Uh, when the words of Surah Tawba, وَالَّذِينَ يَكْنِذُونَ الذَّهَبَ وَالْفِزَةَ وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَهَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَبَشِّرْهُمْ بِأَذَابٍ عَلِيمٍ That people who make triary, who gather what? Who gather gold and silver and riches and do not spend them in the path of Allah, then give them tiding of a very, very severe and intense torment on the day of judgment. So when this verse was revealed, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they came over to him and they said that after learning this verse, we have left all desires of collecting or gathering the worldly riches of gold and silver. Now you guide us that what treasures should we then gathered? And then Prophet ﷺ instructed them that it is desirous to gather three things, a tongue which is supple with the remembrance of Allah, that is zikr, a heart which is full of gratitude to Allah, that is shukr, and a body which is patient in the obedience of Allah, that is patience and sabr. Similarly, Prophet has also been reported to say that Four things, if a person has, he is the luckiest person. So the luckiest person on God's earth is who has four habits. Number one, who has what? A grateful soul, a patient body, a tongue supple with the remembrance of Allah, and a spouse who is supportive in the manners of religion or in religious affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and our children with all these four. Prophet sallallahu used to supplicate after salah, Rabbi a'inni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, help me, help me be grateful to you and help me remember you. And then the words of Prophet ﷺ in another supplication, Allahumma ja'alni saburan wa ja'alni shakura. Oh Allah, make me out of those who are 
grateful and make me out of those who are patient. Now, the second message of this verse, the third message of the verse is, and the order of Allah is, uskuru ni'mati an'amtu alaykum means what? That Allah is saying, mention the blessings which I have showered upon you. Mentioning of the blessings of Allah, talking about his bounties. This is not for the purpose of exhibition or to show off or to do riyah, but it is for the acceptance and acknowledgement of blessings. And you know what? Talking about one's blessings will have a very positive impact on our companions, all those around us. Just let me give you an example. Like if there's a person who is really deprived and despite of being deprived, the person still talks about and still mentions the blessings of Allah. So this will be a great message of gratitude for all those around him. This will be a message and it'll be, it'll be, it will be something they need to think about. They will be forced to think, talk, seeing him talk about the blessings of Allah, despite being so deprived. So all those around him who have plenty of blessings, they will be forced to think that if this person in his state of poverty or his state of illness and crises, if he can manage to be grateful, then how can we imagine of being ungrateful to Allah? So uzkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum is a powerful reminder and it will be an invitation of gratitude to all those around us. And then the fourth, fourth thing or the fourth message we gather from these words is that Allah is asking us to mention. But mention what? Allah says, Mention what? Mention my blessings. And do not keep on talking about and do not keep on uh, discussing or mentioning what you are deprived of. Be grateful for all what you have and do not keep on cribbing or grumbling or complaining of what you have been deprived of. So this is a positive outlook which this verse teaches us. And the fifth point which we gather from here is that Allah says, mention what? Mention the bounties on whom? Uskuru ni'mati allatu allati an'amtu alaykum. Mention the bounties which I have showered on you. Bounties of Allah which I have given you and do not go about. Do not go about looking here and there and keeping on count the blessings of others. So this is again a very positive message. Count your own blessings. Acknowledge your own blessings. Talk about your own blessings and mention your own blessings. Don't just go, do, uh, go around looking upon the blessings of others. This will prevent all forms of depressions and anxieties and this will prevent the negative feelings of envy and will always, always stop us from being envious. So this is again a positive outlook. As it is said, that what we need to do is that when we are talking about, when we are thinking about knowledge and we are thinking about virtuous deeds, then we need to look up at a person who has greater knowledge and who is more, more virtuous than us. And as far as the worldly riches, the gold, the silver, the cash, the kind, the houses, the properties, all these things are concerned, it is suggested that we need to look at a person who has all these blessings lesser than us. The purpose was not, was not to make us get arrogant and proud, but the purpose is to see a person who is deprived of all what we have so that we acknowledge what we have and we develop this feeling, this blessed feeling of gratitude in our hearts. 
Rabbi a'ini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Allahumma ja'alli saburam wa ja'alli shakura. And then in the second part of the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after asking them to remember, uskuru ni'amati allati an'amtu alaykum, Allah says, one of the bounties Allah mentions, wa anni faddaltukum alal alameen, that there is no doubt that, O oh, Bani Israel, I have preferred you over the whole of the worlds. How had Allah preferred Bani Israel over the world? What was the superiority? The superiority was because they were blessed with the prophets and they were blessed, repeatedly blessed with the divine holy scriptures and the holy books.